Exodus chapter number 32. We'll only read one verse for the sake of time, and that's verse number one. If you got it, say amen. amen. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. Amen. I want you to notice this next little phrase really jumped out and grabbed at me. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Dad, if you don't mind, pray for us. Help us, Holy Ghost. Oh, God, touch us tonight. Father, I need you. Father, I need you. God, touch us. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Holy Ghost. God, feed our needs so yes. tell us that you change us, God. And all you do, we'll thank you and praise you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We find a man by the name of Moses. Probably one of my favorite Bible characters is Moses. Number one, he had a beard. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God for a beard. This man Moses has done many great things in the work of God. Sure. It's amazing what God can do with one man. Now remember, he was a murderer. It's amazing what God can do with one man being obedient to God. This man Moses conquered many things. This man Moses had a lot of things against him and sad to say the people of God were half his problem. The people of God were half his problem. I want you to notice verse number one. The Bible says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down. We find here in verse number 1, the Bible says, and Moses delayed. What was going on with Moses? Moses was getting a mighty word from God. Moses, God had called Moses out to, Brother Jordan, go to the Mount Sinai to get, man, here in a few minutes we'll see that Preacher Foster God was feeding Moses' his soul. Let me say this, Moses wasn't up there for Moses. Moses was up there for you and I and for every child of God and every man, person of Israel. Moses was up on that mountain talking to God not for Moses' sake, but for the people of God. And can I say I'm glad I got a pastor in my life that sometimes he has to go to God, not for his sake, but he goes to God for my sake. Yeah. Moses delayed the, the leader, man that led them out through all captivity. Now he's gone. Now what's going to happen? Moses, where are you? Not only do we find Moses' delay, but we find Moses' direction there. We find in verse number 1, and Moses delayed to come down out of of the mount. And here in a minute you'll see why he wanted to stay so long. We find, you don't got to turn there, but in Exodus chapter number 24 verse number 14 the Bible says this, and he said unto the elders, tarry you here for us until we come again unto you and behold Aaron and her are with you if any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up unto the mount I like this next part and a cloud covered the mount. Yeah. Not only was there a mountain, Brother Mike, but there was a cloud on top of the mountain. Moses waited. I want you to turn here. Exodus chapter number 24. Exodus chapter number 24. I really want you to see this. Moses, God come to Moses in verse number 12 and, and said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up unto me into the mount. Notice that. And be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. I like this. Moses didn't say, all right, God, give me a few minutes. All right, Mr. Ellis, just give me a few minutes, God. Let me get some things together. I like what verse number 13 says. And Moses rose up. Yeah. I'll say this, preacher, and God knows my heart. If we would be more and quick to be obedient to God, bigger things would take place. 
God's been telling some of you to do something these past three weeks and you refuse. You say, God, i got to get this figured out. God, God's wanting to take Emmanuel Baptist Church not up to the mountain, but past the mountain into the glory of God, into the cloud of God, but you refuse to do what God's told you to do. I'm glad, Brother Cato, that Moses was a man who obeyed God with everything he had. God said, Moses, I want you to come up. And verse number 13 of chapter number 24, and Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. I want you to see this right here. I want you to look at verse number 15. Now as Moses and Joshua was going up, we find in verse number 15, and Moses went up into the mount. I like this. And a cloud covered the mount. There's a lot of preaching right there. And the glory of the Lord abode on the Mount Sinai and he co- and the cloud covered it six days and the seventh day, notice this now he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud God told him, Moses you're not going to get to the cloud till you're first being obedient to me to get up and go to the mountain I've been trying to watch the services these past few weeks when I haven't been here, had the opportunity. Brother Foster, I believe with all my heart, Emmanuel Baptist Church is on the way up the mountain. Things like that, brother, happening in the church. What a blessing of men the devil got. Praise God for that. I believe that you're almost to the top of the mountain. But I believe with all my heart, Brother Jordan, something bigger than getting to the top of the mountain is getting called in the cloud. I will say this tonight. Man, God showed me this today. A lot of people get to the mountain. You're, you're willing to obey God. You're willing to do what God's told you half the way. You're, a lot of people get to the mountain, but they never get to get in the midst. Look there in verse number, number, number 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mound in the eyes of the children of Israel. We'll find here in just a minute that some things were going on with the people of God being wicked. And let me say this, this world knows, Florence, Kentucky knows, I know South Carolina knows what's going on up here. People watching all over the world know that the glory of God is up here. Souls being saved. Man, backsliders getting right with God. People know something's going on. But church, I'll I'll be honest with you. I don't want to get, Brother Cato, I just don't want to get to the mountain, Brother Doug. Listen, there's many a Christians. There's been many a times, Brother Denny, we all got to the mountaintop. And I thank God for the mountaintop. I'm glad the same God in the valley is the same God that's on the mountaintop. I'm glad for mountaintops in my life. I'm glad victory's been to some mountaintops. But dear God Almighty, Brother Connor, what I want to see more than anything, I don't, I don't want to get past the mountaintop. I want to move up a little higher. I want to get in the glory of God. I I want to get where God's at. I want to get where the glory of God is. Too many people are satisfied being in the mountaintop. It's comfortable on the mountain. It's going to cost me a little more to be on the mountain. I wonder tonight if somebody would say, God, I'm tired of being on the mountain. Dear God, put me in the midst of the glory of God. So many people get to the mountaintop but they're not patient enough to see the midst. Look with me there in verse number 16. God never called Moses in the cloud until after the seventh day. One thing I have learned about God, Miss Annette, my time and his time are on two different levels. Moses had to be obedient to God 100% to get to the mountain. Brother James on day seven. On day seven, Brother Doug, all of a sudden, there was a voice coming out of the cloud. The voice coming out of the cloud. Dear Lord, I'm trying to move on. Brother Jordan, he's standing there at the mountain. He sees the cloud. No doubt he wants to get in the cloud. No doubt he just wants to walk in the cloud. But he couldn't get in the glory. He couldn't get in the cloud till somebody called him. Would it be tonight that the dear God of heaven, y'all been on the mountain top, and if you ain't experiencing nothing, you ain't felt God in here, I'd get 
stand in this altar and repent and ask God to forgive you of everything you've done. But hey, I'm tired of being just on the mountain. I'm tired of just being close to it. I'm tired of just being near it. I want to get in the glory. I want to step in God. I want to get all in the glory of God. So many people are willing to stay on the mountain instead of getting in the midst. Let me ask you, church, are you satisfied on being on the mountain? What if Moses would have said, Preacher, you know what? I believe this is far enough, God. I've been here five days, and Brother Sean, I believe it's time to pack up and go home. Brother James, man, it, it's hard serving God four days in a row. Preacher, please don't call for another week. I just don't know. Preacher, if I can clear my schedule anymore. Preacher, I've done clear all kind of stuff. Preacher, this, it's, it's three weeks. That, that's good. You know what you're saying to God? You're satisfied being on the mountain. And the whole time God has the glory of God. We'll find out here in a minute if we get that far. God is going to show Moses all kind of awesome, miraculous, crazy things. But you got to wait on God. Moses waited six days. Notice this in chapter 24 verse number 12. He got the promise to go into the mountain. But you know what, preacher Doug, I never find where God said, you know what, brother Sean, you're going to get to enjoy the cloud. The only thing God promised Moses is he's going to the mountain. But you know what, man, I see it all the time. God tells people to do stuff and they grieve the Spirit of God. I believe with all my heart there's somebody here tonight that's tried to be obedient, but yet you're so far away from doing what God has told you to do. Mama, God has called you to do some things and God wants you to be obedient to Him, Brother Sean. God has told some daddies in here, you better do this. If no man, I want to get you to there, but you refuse. You, I, I can't do it. My hands are full. I've got too much going on, but my God, what's awaiting in the glory of God? Are you satisfied being on the mountain? Do you want to be in the mountain or do you want to be in the midst? Moses had a decision to make. Is he going to wait on God? I like this. Ned says this all the time. Waiting time is not wasted time. Aren't you thankful for a long suffering God tonight? Aren't you thankful there's a God? Hallelujah! That gives you time after time. I don't know about y'all, but when I mess up, Brother Foster, I'm glad that God gives one strike and two strikes and three strikes and four strikes. Somebody say amen. I'm glad I have a God who's long suffering in my life. Do you want to stay on the mountain? Or do you want to get in the midst? Man, A.W. Tozier said this. Brother Doug, this is powerful. Nothing bothers the devil more than a Christian delighting in God's presence. Let me ask you this question. Is the devil even scared of you? Daddy, Mama, let me ask you a question. When, when your feet hit the floor, does the devil tremble because Jeffrey Phillips, Jeffrey Phillips has woke up? Does hell shake, Brother Jordan, when Jordan Foster, his feet hit the floor? Does hell tremble because Jordan Foster's awake? Does the devil, Brother Foster, when Emmanuel Baptist Church gathers in on Sunday, does the devil tremble because Emmanuel Baptist Church is, is alive and ready to go? Or does he say, I'm not worried about them. They're just satisfied being on. Listen, I know it's week three. Hallelujah unto God. But man, God pressed this thing in my heart this morning. So many people are satisfied. So many people are comfortable. I see it at church. I see it at home. Man, I, I was youth pastor for three years. I see it. Complacency. And man, you've been in church. You know how to raise your hand. You know how to give your tithe. But can I say, God is sick and tired of people on the mountaintop. He wants to get some people in the midst of the glory of God. God. You know what would turn the church upside down? Preachers talking about seeping out the walls, making men them contractors crawl up the driveway and get saved. I tell you what, it, mom and daddy step off in the glory. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa get in the glory of God. 
I wish I had a timeline for you where I could say, you do this, Miss Brittany, and it's going to happen. I don't. Right. The only thing I know, Moses was faithful and Moses was obedient to God. Yeah. Moses. And let me say this, Israel knew what was going on on the mountain. Yeah. Brother Doug, Israel knew, could look up. Say, Jeff, how you know that? Look there in verse number 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devourer in the fire on top of the mount. Guess who's up there? Oh, Moses. Chapter 32, they're like, where Moses at? I, I can see little, little Johnny, little Susie preacher say, hey, mama, mama, do you remember Moses said he's going up there? Mama, what's, what's up there, mama? Daddy, what's up there? Hey, Papa, what's up there? I can see them boldly say, that's where the glory of God is. That's where we need to get. Can I say the only hope for America, the only hope for our churches, the only hope for society, the only hope for them missionaries back there is if somebody would get in the midst and get off the mountain. Let me say this to God. People will know if you've been in the glory. He mentioned it the other night in Mississippi. I believe with all my heart in the elevator we was going up the mountain. But I believe with all my heart when I stepped into 222 I believe we got in the midst of the glory of God. Can I say this? I'm trying to move on. But let me say this. A lot of people, preacher, are scared to get in the glory of God. I'll be honest with you. If you ever got into it just one time, you're ruined. Whatever words y'all use up here, you're done for. Can I say, kids, can I say, teenagers, can I, y'all girls who said y'all 13 years old, guess what? Y'all can get in it. Four, five, six, seven year olds can get in it. Can I say the only reason this meeting's going on is because some kids said, hey, man, I'm tired of the normal. I'm tired of the good old routines. I want to get in the glory of God. I wish down at Victory Daddy, I wish some daddies and some mamas will say, God, I'm tired of being on the mountaintop. I'm tired of being comfortable. I'm tired of being complacent. I'm tired of the same humdrum. Dear God, get me in the midst of the glory of God. Moses, what was Moses doing up there? I like this. You'll find over seven, eight times. Chapter 25, verse number one. I like, say, Jeff, what was going on up there on top of that mountain? God spoke to him and said, hey, Moses, it's all right, man. Come on in. Could you imagine walking through that? The glory of God, that's just like that room in 222, just walking in. You don't know what's going on. We're laughing and crying. Moses walking in, say, Jeff, what's going on? I tell you what's going on. Chapter 25, verse number one. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Look with me at chapter number 30. Chapter number 30, verse number 11. The Bible, the Bible says, chapter 30, verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Look with me. Chapter 30, verse number 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Look with me verse number 22 moreover the Lord spake unto Moses verse 34 and the Lord said unto Moses chapter 31 verse number 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses chapter 31 verse number 12 and the Lord spake unto Moses Jeff what's going on up there what's going on in the glory of God God and Moses is communicating God is talking to Moses God is feeding Moses God is preaching to Moses the word of God and God is Moses are communicating let me ask you this when's the last time you and God had a conversation oh preacher in revival God has to be speaking to me let me say this God does not owe us absolutely anything Amen, amen. God does not owe us paying us a visit. God does not owe him getting this brother right back with God. God does not owe them kids being saved in January. God doesn't owe us anything. The only thing we deserve is hell. And we should be there today. But for the grace of God. Say, Jeff, I'm, I give a lot of money to the church. Jeff, surely, surely God will get me in the glory. Let me say this. There's been people, preacher, that's tried to buy their way in the glory of God. Can I say it's never going to happen? 
I've seen some of the, the most broke people in my life. Little mama that has nothing left in church. I can tell you names right now. Brother Doug, they be sitting there. Brother Denny, you can name something there. Victory dead. They get the man just the quiver and the start the more tears streaming down their face. You know their world's turned upside down. You know they have nothing, no dollars left to pay the bills. And that mama up there just a praising God. I'm telling you, it don't cost nothing to get in the glory of God, but obedience and faithfulness. Now you see why nobody don't get in the glory. The only thing the glory of God cost, preacher, that I can find here in the Word of God is obedience and faithfulness. I'll say this, church. If we, if we stay on the mountaintop, we can kiss our nation goodbye. Brother Doug, if we don't get in the glory of God, There's some names right there. Yep. Say, Jeff, is it, is it really what it takes? There's no telling what this church would come if just one person say, Jeff, I'm tired of being on the mountaintop. I want to get in the midst. What was God doing? God was planning. God was planning the tabernacle in Exodus 26 and 27. God was planning the tribute, the offering, Exodus chapter number 25. God was even planning the threads in Exodus chapter number 28. God was telling Moses exactly how the tabernacle needed to be set up, what the priests are supposed to wear. And now he was telling in Genesis 29 and 30 that, man, there's some prep and there's some transformation that needs to happen. Not only was God planning, but God was prepping. I want you to see this, and I'll move right along. I promise I'm almost done because God's saying something right here not only was God planning but God was prepping I want you to look at Genesis or Exodus chapter number 31 verse number 1 say what was God doing up there in the glory what was Moses and God doing I tell you what he was doing he was some prepping some other men not on the mountain top but in the glory look there in Genesis, Exodus 31 verse number 1 the Lord spake unto Moses saying See, I have, I have called by name Bazil, and the son of Uriah, the son of her of the tribe of Judah. Notice what's going on in the glory of God. There were some people, verse number three, and I have filled with him the Spirit of God and wisdom and an understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship say Jeff what does all that mean getting on the mountaintop don't get no extra help but when you get in the glory of God God will start taking young men calling them to preach and say preacher I don't know if God can use me let me say this if God can use a liar if God can use a murderer if God can use a backstabber if God can use Saul I'm sure he can use us God used a harlot God used all kind of drunkards in the word of God I promise you we are the least of the least say Jeff how does that happen got to get in the midst I believe with all my heart there's some boys here that preach of some people in Emmanuel Baptist Church get in the midst of the glory of God those men been thinking about man I want to be used by God I just don't know how I tell you how it happens you get in the midst and get off the mountain not only was God planning God's prepping but I want to say this God was providing in Exodus 31 verse number 18 and he gave unto Moses I like this right here had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai. See, Jeff, what was going on up there? God and Moses just having themselves a time. I watched Brother Donald a while ago get a little giddy when he was talking. I love it. If you would have seen us in that motel room in Mississippi, y'all would have think we are cuckoo and need to be locked up. But can I say, when you get in the midst and get off the mountain, those things don't even matter. One of my buddies, he was wrapped up in the curtain. I had two big old pillows over my head. That man of God right there was laying prostrate in the bathroom floor. We didn't care. You know what, preacher? We was tired of being on the mountain. 
We were sick and God filled the Holy Ghost. Brother Jordan, we were sick and tired of being on the mountain. I was sick and tired, Brother Denny, of Victory Baptist Church just being on the mountain. Listen, I'll be honest with you. My heart tonight, I've got four pages. God said, hush her right there. I'll be honest with you. I am sick and tired of just being on the mountaintop. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.